Endeavor, ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is ISS. We're ready for the event. WJRT TV, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor ISS for a voice check. Houston, this is WJRT. Do you hear me? WJRT, this is ISS. We have you loud and clear. Oh, loud and clear. We like that. All right, we hear you loud and clear. Go ahead and... Well, I'm thrilled and honored to be talking to the, the pilot of the Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor, Gregory Johnson, and Mission Specialist Drew Foistel. And gentlemen, I was going to say good evening. It's good evening here. How do I address you? Is it good morning, good afternoon, or good evening up there? Well, uh, it's uh, kind of a morning for us. We've just been up a few hours. Uh, we're spending our final 10 hours or so uh, in the space station. We're going to close the hatches tonight, sleep, and then on dock uh, first thing in the morning. So it's a bittersweet day for us today. Greg, I'm going to ask my first question to you, uh, being the pilot of Endeavor. Boy, you, you, you get to see some fantastic real estate when you're, uh, when you're flying the bird. And I understand there's one or two places on the planet that you really, really like, and it's kind of a backdoor compliment, I think. One of them is here in Michigan. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little confusing, but being a military brat, uh, Ohio and Michigan have both been kind of my home states. I went to high school in Ohio, but uh, maybe uh, I'd like to retire in Traverse City, Michigan. There's a beautiful lake, Long Lake, uh, Michigan. Uh, it's uh, just southwest of Traverse City, about uh, eight or ten miles. And we had an overflight. Uh, Drew and I both have been trying uh, desperately to get some great photos of Michigan. It was cloudy over the Detroit area, but Traverse City was clear. And we flew directly over the bay, the Grand Traverse Bays, uh, and uh, got a straight down shot on uh, Long Lake uh, uh, up near Traverse City. It was wonderful. Well, Drew, uh, that's a natural follow-up for those who don't know. Drew is uh, born and raised in Lake Orion, just down the street from where I'm talking to you right now. And, Drew, you've logged a lot of time uh, in spacewalks. And to me, that's one of the greatest thrills, the launch, spacewalks, and return. Can you ever put into words, can you ever verbalize the feeling of what it's like to take a spacewalk? I can tell you it's, uh, it's quite exhilarating. It's, uh, the first moments outside of the airlock are, are a little bit tense. Um, you could say even a, and a little bit scary. Uh, my first experience in space was, of course, with the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. And in that environment, uh, the, our, our work area was just, just out the back door inside the shuttle payload bay. In this case, uh, on the International Space Station, when you open the hatch, you're staring straight down on the Earth. And I can tell you, it really took my breath away that first moment and uh, felt a little tentative uh, moving around. Um, and then to see the great expanse of the space station as it hovers over the Earth is just fascinating. Um, the, the colors are very vivid, the structures are very real, and uh, you realize you've got quite a long ways to go to get to your work site. But it's a, it's a very special uh, opportunity, and, and I'm just thrilled to have, uh, have had that chance to be out there and do the spacewalks and do the work on the space station. You know, Drew, I've often wondered, you know, does the training that you go through for a spacewalk weightlessness even come close to the actual experience? I'm sure they try their best to train you, but is it like night and day or is it really pretty close? Well, it's pretty close uh, except for the view. You know, we train at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, which is a large pool and has the structure of the International Space Station in it. Um, but the, the details are extremely close, and in fact, that's one of the things that helps us because uh, when we get out on the space station here in space, uh, it's easy to become disoriented uh, because 
we, our bodies uh, are able to maintain different positions than we do in the neutral buoyancy lab, and that's mainly due to gravity and some of the, the loads we have to deal with there. So uh, when you get turned upside down or facing the wrong direction and you have the, um, the distractions of the earth uh, spinning beneath you, it can, uh, can send your, uh, your gyro spinning in your head and get you a little bit uh, out, of, out of sense and, and lose a sense of direction. So uh, details and the effort that the folks at uh, the Johnson Space Center put into training us and providing us with those uh, mock-ups of our facilities really save us and help us. Uh, and with uh, almost 200 hours of training for this mission uh, in that pool, uh, that allowed us to really focus on our tasks and uh, not become distracted by, by the views or the disorienting uh, body positions out there. Gentlemen, we asked uh, our viewers to pose some questions on our Facebook page, and there was one resounding theme, and it's a pretty simple question. We think we know the answer, but we'd certainly like to hear you. What are your thoughts about the end of the space shuttle program? This particular question uh, submitted by Alan, and I'm going to postscript it by asking kind of a B side of that, too. While the shuttle program may be coming to an end, you know, as a kid, I always wanted to grow up to be an astronaut. Kids today, both girls and boys, they can still have that dream, can't they? The space shuttle program may be coming to an end, but we still need astronauts. Absolutely. Uh, I was in Cairo, Michigan, uh, on the east side there, uh, with, at my grandparents' house, wa watching a black and white TV when I was seven years old, watching the first lunar landing uh, back in 1969. And uh, at that point, uh, I had the dream of becoming an astronaut, and it took about 40 years, but uh, finally achieved that, uh, that dream here um, the last few years. I've gotten a couple space flights. And, you know, uh, Endeavor is a, uh, has been a, and, and the space shuttle has been a, uh, a workhorse uh, for space exploration, uh, essentially building the entire space station, uh, fixed the Hubble telescope and doing a whole bunch of other interesting tasks out in space. And when the space shuttle retires, uh, we're going to lose a lot of capability of uh, moving large payloads out to space. But then that opens the doors for new things that are, are going to come across the horizon. And the children out there should be inspired that when they get to go, they'll probably get to go beyond low Earth orbit, maybe to the moon, maybe to Mars or beyond. you have anything to say? Well, that's a great answer. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, too. And I have one final question. This is what I'm going to pose to, to Greg. I know you're going to be pretty busy come Monday uh, bringing, the, bringing Endeavor back home, but it is Memorial Day. You and several other uh, astronauts certainly have seen uh, military service, even some combat service. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking of Memorial Day 2011? And Drew, feel free to jump in on that one, too. Well, you know, uh, we have a... Uh, rich history in our country of, uh, of service. And uh, it was an honor for me to uh, serve my country for 24 and a half years. I still kind of feel like I have the same job. Uh, after retiring from the Air Force, I had the same desk, the same duties, and, and uh, basically uh, flying in space has been my job in the Air Force for the last 10 years of it. So uh, I would say that um, I'm proud of all those who have served and uh, all of those in the federal government who have also supported uh, uh, military service. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a bittersweet uh, a weekend uh, thinking about that and having, allowing uh, us to be uh, doing what we love. And I, can, I would just like to say that uh, after having been in the program uh, for 10 years, it's an honor to serve the country this way as a civilian. And uh, I, I guess it's uh, appropriate uh, that Endeavor is, is landing in its final flight uh, here at, on Memorial Day to sort of commemorate it all. And uh, it makes it that much more special for us uh, on this anniversary and the occasion of its uh, landing and its final flights. Well, Drew, Greg, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for your service to our country. Have a fun trip back home, and uh, hope to see you on terra firma pretty soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks so much. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WJRT TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WKYC. Hi, Greg. Hi, Drew. It's Eric Mansfield in Cleveland, Ohio. Can you hear me tonight? 
Hi, Eric. We have you loud and clear from the International Space Station. All right, here we go. Let's just track this here. Here we go in three, two, one. And it is my pleasure tonight to go live now to the International Space Station and talk with pilot Greg Johnson and mission specialist Drew Feustel, uh, up way up there at the International Space Station, of course, aboard STS-134 Endeavor. Gentlemen, good evening. How is the trip going? Hey, good evening. Uh, we're having a fantastic time. This is flight day 14, which for us is actually our final day on the space station. And uh, we've had four uh, exceptional spacewalks during the time up here. We've been in preparations over the last few days of uh, transferring items, uh, resupply items to the space station. And uh, we're now in the process of packing up everything we need to take back with us on the shuttle and get ready to leave. Uh, can you talk to me about just what it means, the, the significance of saying goodbye to the shuttle program, and also for both of you saying goodbye to the International Space Station to come home? Well, it's been an honor uh, to, to be aboard Endeavor. Uh, Endeavor uh, is my, I, I love all the shuttles, but Endeavor's been my favorite. I flew my first flight in Endeavor. It's the newest space shuttle, and now this is the 25th flight, a nice uh, round number uh, for uh, Endeavor's uh, uh, final mission. And so uh, it's a thrill to be on this final flight of Endeavor. And we're, we're really pleased to be able to uh, help round out the program uh, with the su successful work that we've had up here. And uh, we hope that uh, th there's one more flight after us and, and they'll, they'll finish off the space shuttle program. And, and we really believe that we're uh, ending on a, on a very strong and positive note and looking forward to future opportunities. Sure. And you know the prayers of America and certainly everybody in Northeast Ohio is with you. How is Commander Mark Kelly doing? Because certainly everyone's concerned about him and sending their best wishes during this trip. Well, he's done quite well. He's uh, an experienced commander and uh, exper experienced military pilot, and uh, he's uh, performed flawlessly and, and been an exceptional leader for us over the past two years. And I think it's an honor for both of us and, and the rest of the crew to serve with him, and we've really, uh, we've really appreciated and enjoyed his leadership. Now, now before I let you go, i got to ask you, Greg, I know that you went to high school in Ohio, and Drew, you grew up in Michigan. Uh, how are the two of you getting along up there uh, at the space station? Well, you know, Drew and I were just talking about that this morning. We're actually both from Ohio and Michigan. Uh, I, I went to high school, school in Ohio, uh, but I have uh, strong family roots in Michigan. My mom and dad both went to U of M, uh, and my sister went to U of M. And uh, even though Ohio State, uh, the guy across the street had an Ohio State flag hanging uh, during the Ohio State-Michigan game, my dad would wear his MGO blue tie even with his military uniform, which is not exactly uh, allowed, but he would do it on that day. You have anything to say to that? <laughs> well, I just figure I lived close enough to Ohio and spent enough time there and have had some relatives uh, that have lived in the state that uh, I consider Ohio part of my uh, hometown area as well. All right. Well, only in outer space can you mix Michigan and Ohio and, and get along. Greg and Drew, thank you so much to both of you. Thanks for spending time with us and have a safe journey home. Yeah, thanks so much for your time, and uh, we appreciate the support. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, WJRT-TV and WKYC-TV. Endeavor ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications.